Right now, thousands of gun rights activists, white nationalists, militia groups all swarming the Virginia state capitol. There are a lot of people nervous about what's going to happen. Authorities in Richmond are on a high alert. It could be a tense day. Just polarization, what may happen in Virginia. Several hate groups, supposedly some white nationalists. White nationalists. White nationalists. White nationalists. White nationalist groups. White supremacists. White supremacists. White supremacists. White extremists. This entire rally stands in, in opposition to the meaning of this day. It's been a few days since the pro-Second Amendment rally in Virginia, and many have already commented on it, but I wanted to take a look back at past protests and show how the media has always deceptively reported on left-wing protests versus right-wing protests. Before the Virginia rally, we all knew that they would demonize it and the attendees. It's their modus operandi to frame their political opposition as white supremacists, nationalists, racists, and just generally horrible monsters. They've been doing this for as long as I've been paying attention. There's certainly a lot of concern here. Raising fears of a dangerous confrontation. It could be violence. And there is real concern there about what the intention is behind this. There's a lot of concern about the potential for violence. It spark violence. Tensions high in Virginia may cause violence there. North, I'm clearly trying to avoid another Charlottesville. Yeah. In Charlottesville. Could see a repeat of what we saw in 2017 in Charlottesville. Similar to what we saw in Charlottesville. Worrying about a repeat of Charlottesville. First off, we need to talk about the media's use of the terms left wing and right wing. The media and the Democrats Democrats use right wing as a slur. To them, right wing is synonymous with racism and hatred. That's how the media uses the label, and they use it very often. Along with right wing extremists, partisan Republican, and hard right. Not so much when it comes to left wing, hard left, far left, liberal, socialist, or communist. Take this study done by a writer from the National Review. All he had to do is a Nexus database search for these politically loaded terms, and this is what he found. The term partisan Republican has turned up 85 times in the English language news media over the past 90 days. By contrast, the term partisan Democrat has turned up only 58 times in the same time period. That's a ratio of 1.5 to 1. The term extremist. A Nexus search of extreme right over the past month scored 212 mentions. A Nexus search of extreme left over the past month yielded 58 items. This search reveals that the print media label right-wingers extreme nearly four times more often than they label left-wingers extreme. How about hard right and left? Nexus search for print media uses of hard right over the past 90 days, 683. Nexus search for print media uses of hard left over the past 90 days, 312. Again, the media are apt to label an individual or group hard right more than twice as often as they are apt to label an individual or group hard left. Now, let me just say that while I'm not surprised by the bias shown in this basic study, I am kind of surprised that the media used those terms at all in regards to left-wingers. I'd be hard-pressed to remember any time in recent memory that I've heard the media use any of these terms in regards of left-wingers or Democrats. After the re-election of George W. Bush, the Media Research Council did another study and found the same imbalance in the use of these terms. So I think it's pretty obvious at this point that the media portrays their political opposition in the worst possible terms and their own side in the best possible terms. Going back to the George W. Bush years, just like Trump, protests began the day he took office. And the media always portrayed those protests in the most positive light. Take for example the extreme left-wing protests and calls for violence against Bush. The media never raised a fuss and of course they defended them as a sacred American tradition. You might remember a woman named Cindy Sheehan who was a hero in the media for protesting Bush. At the time, anybody who dared criticize any of these protesters was shouted down by both the Democrats and the media. I am sick and tired of people who say that if you debate and you disagree with this administration, somehow you're not patriotic and we should stand up and say we are Americans and we have a right to debate and disagree with any administration. Don't forget though, it's different when they do it and those standards go right out the window when a Democrat is in the White House. When Obama took office and protests erupted against him, the media and Democrats suddenly flipped and began demonizing these protesters as racist, white supremacists, and all the typical labels that we've become familiar with. They even turned on Cindy Sheehan, who was at least consistent and began protesting Obama. So-called journalists who championed her under Bush suddenly turned on her and told her enough already. CNN, who loved their anti-Bush protests, suddenly were lashing out at regular people who were just exercising their right to protest. Hey! 
Catholic schoolgirls marched on Jackson Square. They and their teachers say more money is needed to fix the levees, and they hope the president would stop by after his meeting with business leaders. But while a lookalike showed up with a wad of cash, Mr. Bush did not. This guy, uh, would you come over here with me, please? You know, what is this supposed to mean? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, he's a fascist. The pirates... Wait, why do you say he's pirates? a fascist? He's the president of the United States. He's a fascist. Do you, do, you realize how, uh, do you realize how offensive that is? I hey, sorry for the interruption, but I just wanted to give you all a quick update on this channel. We need to keep trying to open people's eyes to the media's deception. You can help do that by liking and sharing this video. If you know somebody who fears supposed right-wingers, show them the examples that I laid out here, and perhaps they'll be a little bit more skeptical during the next media con job. Not only is you YouTube demonetizing everything I upload, but now they're not even giving me my manual reviews. Look, I love what I do, and I'm gonna do it regardless of the money. But the hard fact is, it takes a lot of time to create these videos, and I need to be making money with that time. If you would like to support this channel and my mission, consider joining me on Subscribestar, Patreon, or just sending a donation on PayPal. With this support, I can continue to grow and improve this channel. However you decide to support this channel, just know that I deeply appreciate it. And it just got worse. You know how Trump is attacked every single day in the media? Well, back then, it was the Tea Party. The Tea Party protests were constantly framed as racist, right-wing fanatics and militias. Anytime an act of violence occurred anywhere in the country, the media jumped at the chance to somehow blame the Tea Party. On something that might be significant. There is a Jim Holmes of Aurora, Colorado uh, page uh, on the Colorado Tea Party site as well, talking about him joining the Tea Party uh, last year. I don't know much about him. Uh, an earlier report that, that I had was incorrect, that he was connected with the Tea Party. In fact, that's a different Jim Holmes. A good example today would be how the media so quickly jumped on the Jesse Smollett hoax, or how they instantly framed the Covington boys as the aggressors. The media was more interested in confirming biases than getting to the truth. But just like the protesters in Virginia, the Tea Party rallies were always peaceful and they even cleaned up their trash afterwards. You see, the Tea Party had to go above and beyond to look good because the media was looking for any reason to demonize them. And because of this, the media literally had to make up incidents. Like when MSNBC edited footage of a black man at a Tea Party rally and cropped it so you couldn't tell and then said it was a white man who was there because he hated a black president. This leads me to MSNBC. Where on Tuesday, Contessa Brewer filed a report about health care protesters showing up armed. In it, she used tape of that same black guy with the rifle and said this. And the reason we're talking about this, a lot of talk here, Dylan, because people feel like, yes, there are Second Amendment rights for sure, but also there are questions about whether this has a racial overtones. I mean, here you have a man of color in the presidency and white people showing up with guns strapped right. to their waist. But like I said, the guy was black, but you never would have known because MSNBC had strategically edited the tape. So the race of the armed dude wasn't revealed. Or how about when the Democrats and their media coordinated to manufacture a lie that Tea Partiers spit on black Congressman Emanuel Cleaver? Despite there being cameras everywhere around the time and place that he claims this happened, no evidence ever surfaced to back up the claims. <laughs> oh, but that didn't stop the media from getting as much use out of the claim as they could. Repeating the baseless claim over and over for weeks. Breitbart.com even offered a $100,000 reward to anybody that can present audio or visual evidence. It was never claimed. And that's why we call them the drive-by media. Now, let's take a look at violent left-wing rallies that occurred around the same time that the Tea Party rallies were going on. Those mostly peaceful protests involving thousands across the country on May Day turned violent in the Northwest with what police called a riot in Portland, Oregon, and nine officers injured in downtown Olympia, Washington. As many as 100 protesters clashed with police in those two cities with smoke bombs, rocks and bottles being thrown and fires set. Those small pockets of violence marred peaceful demonstrations with marchers protesting the Trump administration's immigration and labor policies. The city was forced to shut down its May Day march after the peaceful protest to support labor and immigration rights turned violent. We need to be disciplined. Anarchists clashed with officers trashing police vehicles and some businesses. For the most part, demonstrators came together peacefully, 
hoping to keep attention. Notice how they hedge when it comes to the left-wing rallies. They make an obvious effort to downplay the violence and separate the peaceful people from the violent ones. But the tea parties are ugly even when your baseless story only allegedly involves one person out of thousands. How about Antifa or BLM? When BLM members and supporters began ambushing police officers, the media went out of their way to distance the group from those terrorists. Exactly the opposite of what they do to the right. That's what the Black Lives Matter uh, uh, protests have been about. That's what the policing protests have been about. They have never been anti-police. They have been about ensuring uh, that the lives of black people are protected and that there's proper policing in our communities. Are you seeing this pattern yet? When violent left-wing activists rally or protest, they're protected and their violence is downplayed. When peaceful right-leaning activists rally or protest, the media exaggerates violence and demonizes all the people. What we witnessed in Virginia was just more of this. That's all I got for you today, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.